Welcome back to Inverted Aviators RC. We are back with the version two of the fully removable digital system that we can add to any FPV plane. Did we actually manage to add it onto a plane and go flying? Yes, we did. So stick around and figure out how we did it. The first big change going from the V1 to the V2 version of this whole set is going from a 40 by 40 12 volt fan to a 25 by 25 12 volt fan. My initial idea with this uh, bigger fan was that it would sit below the air unit and blow air straight up through the air unit and the heat sink would be on the very top, thus helping whisk away the air. Now in practice, that doesn't really work like that and it ended up making the air unit really hot and there was no airflow over the heat sink, meaning none of the extra heat was getting whisked away making again everything a lot hotter. The V2, the idea is that this fan is gonna sit like this with the air unit being right next to it and the heat sink being right on top. So there's gonna be constant airflow coming across, which will not only blow air into the air unit, but it will blow air across the heat sink, pulling all of the heat away from the air unit and it'll make it a lot cooler. And so not only are we saving space because 40 by 40 is a lot bigger than 25 by 25, but it also it's going to be vertical. And so we're going to be losing this much height as well, which is just nice for saving space. The fun thing about the V2 model is it all revolves around this fan during the assembly process. And a, a word to the wise, the, the fan will blow towards a logo. So every wind's going to be going this way. So we're gonna face it towards the left and grab our first three print part, which has two little hooks in the bottom, as well as some standoffs. We can put them right into the back of this fan, just like that. That's our first part installed. And then we're gonna take this over the top part, which also has these two hooks, which will clip into the back part of this fan. And just like that, you can kind of see where we're going with this. And our next step is gonna be adding our O3 air unit. So there's just enough space inside of this little area where we can fit not only this air unit but this fan as well and one step before adding this air unit is going to be adding a little bit of this thermal compound onto the top of the air unit which will create a seal in between the heat sink and the air unit which will help the heat flow up through everything so again this is just mx4 thermal compound i'm just going to add a little bit i don't want it to spill out and get gunky everywhere i'm just going to put a little bit on the top here And again, this is going to be covered by our heat sink, so you don't have to be worried about seeing it all the time. The fan is going to blow through the air unit on the opposite side of this uh, SD card. So we can kind of put this heat sink on top and the whole contraption over it as well. So as you can see, it should slide in between here and then it will hook around the entire system. It is a little finicky just because Tolerances are mighty tight to save as much space as possible. But once we get everything on, you can see that on the bottom, all of these holes should line up with the bottom screw holes of the air unit. And this heat sink should butt up right next up against the fan. And all these fans have channels this way, so it'll flow all of the air across. And this O3 air unit has its own screws, but we're gonna be changing them out for M1 by six, eight millimeter cap screws. That's because we can get it all the way through these 3D printed parts, as well as our main top uh, base part. So I'm gonna line up all of these screw holes, and then we're gonna have our last 3D printed part, which is our base. And this is going to go upside down for the moment. And this uh, top, side with all of the ports is gonna go with the side with the big cable. So I'm gonna just gently bend this down, place this on top. And as you can see, all of these holes line up or just rotate it just to get a better angle. But all of these holes should line up just like this. And we added one screw in each of these corners. All right, and after screwing those on, we can see that our stack is looking mighty nice. You can see that from the side that the uh, fan blows through the heat sink. The heat sink is stuck right to the top. There's not a whole lot of wiggle room, and that's by design, just so all of the heat will go straight up. Then everything is secured nice and tight down to 
the O3 air unit through our base part. And the next step is going to be adding all of these ports onto the side because we are going to need uh, some way to get a voltage from our battery as well as power to our, our receiver as well as some way to control this board from a PWM uh, servo. So we've got these battery or these wire connectors here. We've got an XT60 uh, as well as an XT30 connector and then a normal standard PWM servo output. And this part is going to be pretty straightforward here as all we're going to do is uh, pretty much match the port to the uh, wires. So as you can see, this is this port. So we're just going to feed the wires up through the bottom here. And then it should friction fit right into the bottom. So we're just going to pop this in there. Push it in. And it should go pretty much to the bottom of the XT60 here. So you can see it's pretty flat. And I'm going to take these wires that are coming out the top, bend them down and through, which will let us get access to these on the bottom section, which is where we're going to connect them next. So then just to repeat that for the XT30. This part is just for cable management. I think it looks kind of nice when they're all you know flowing through. And last but not least, we've got to make sure that we get this in the right orientation. Uh, and based on our part that we are designed, we can see that the white wire is on the top. So we'll just match that here. We have white wire on the top. There we go. Now we have all the wires sticking at the bottom. And now we've got to connect everything to our Matek UBEC Duo. And here's a little bit of a closer look. Uh, before in the, in the V1, I didn't really describe what was going on with the actual board, but here we have our voltage input, which is up to six cell, which is perfect, because that's gonna be the voltage we're gonna be using at least at the very high end of what we're gonna be doing. So here's our 12, or here's our six cell input. Here is our PWM output, which we can turn on and off. The 12 volt output, which is gonna be powering both our O3 air unit and our 12 volt fan. I put them on separate uh, XT30 connectors because I think it looks cool and it's easy to if you want to replace the fan or replace something It's easy to just pop the connector out and then you'll be good to go And in the bottom there is another a 5 volt output which are power a receiver as well as any other little 5 volt peripheral things You want to be powering from this board, but it, again, it's a really nice system and it's a nice board to use and it works perfectly for this uh, application and it's really light especially if you take off that top board as well as all of the different metal standoffs and replace them with 3d printed parts it makes this system really really nice so here's the fun part which is uh, attaching this wire to our xt60 this to the pwm and then this to our xt30s and as you can see all of our wires are right here and it's just a matter of uh, orienting it correctly so we want this side to be over here and then see these wires are long because they have to connect all the way down to this side. And then our XT60s go here, PWM here. So I'm just gonna do that quick and I'll get back in just a second. So we got everything soldered up and this board is pretty tight on there, but our next step is gonna be feeding these two female XT30s up through these portholes we have on the side. So they stick up and we're able to plug our uh, air unit and our fan in. So it should be as easy as pushing them up and through. They should be pretty tight, but easy enough to just push these up and through and then up and through on this side, just like this. And they should go up far enough that the bottom of these won't touch anything. I made sure they won't, but you can just give them a little extra push just to be safe. So now we can actually screw together this bottom pad. And I have taken the normal standoffs that come with this Matek UBEC Duo are these little um, metal standoffs. They're really light. They work really well, but I went and 3D printed them. It probably saves a fraction of a gram, but I can say then that I 3D printed one. So as you can see, I just switched them out for four of them. And then I'm using instead of the normal stock screws that come with it, which I still have over here, just little thick um, metal screws. I am using instead M2x12 
um, screws, or I guess bolts with a nut on the top. So I'm just gonna do that for all four of these corners. It's gonna go big screw up through the bottom, then the board, then the standoff, then the top, then a nut on the top, and just gonna sandwich everything together. So again, I'll do that quick and we'll come back in just a second. And last but not least, we need to plug in our fan and our air unit. And these don't really matter which uh, port they go in because they're both um, going to the exact same spot. But as you can see for this fan, I kind of curled and coiled the wire so that it stays in place. And I still have a little slack to work with. So I think I'm going to do the same thing to this air unit. So I'm going to plug this in. And now that's getting power and staying out of the way. But this one's a little long. So what I'm going to do is take a little uh, screwdriver here. I'm just going to coil this around. And hopefully that just keeps everything nice and compact and tight. And this is more of an aesthetic change because in the end it's going to be a very small wire. But as you can see, in the end... Yeah, these wires are staying out of the way a little bit. You could put a little conformal coating or a little heat sink or a little something around there to protect the wires, but since this is gonna be inside of the system, I think it's gonna be just fine. But there we have it. That's our uh, V2 unit all connected up. And it is looking great because it is uh, smaller as the fan on the bottom would normally stick up a whole lot more and the fans on the side, it is a little bigger to the side, but I guess we can break out the scale as well to compare the weights. Uh, so I'll put on screen the weight of the last system because I don't remember off the top of my head. Uh, but as you can see, if we bring, let's see, zero out the scale, and then we put it on, we are looking at 134. So I don't know how that compares to the old system, but I'll do a breakdown of both the system compared to the old system and then taking out the, uh, the camera, the air unit, all of the things that are static in between the two versions. I'll put that on there to make sure, 134. But I will show you how it does. But the most important part, does this actually work? So let's get into the testing, the heat testing, the stress testing, all the fun stuff to see if this thing will actually perform as we want to. Oh yeah, and before we test that, take out your multimeter, put it to continuity mode, which is this little yellow uh, signal looking thing on the bottom and touch the positive and negative wires just to make sure we don't get that fun beep. So we've got positive here, negative here. Nothing, which is good. We can test all the different ports. Still nothing. We can go back and just touch all these wires. Make sure you're not going to let out the fun gray smoke on the first power up because that's going to make things a lot more annoying and potentially dangerous to the electronics. So just go through, make sure nothing makes noise before plugging in. And after confirming that this will most likely not explode when I plug it in, I'm going to use the same base system I used for the V1. And this is the canopy for the RV7. But this is the idea behind this whole system is this is all I need. And when I want to go test, I plug in the camera on the front. I plug in the uh, air unit on the back. And just like that, we're ready to plug in and test. And we already have signal that will control from the Maytek UBEC Duo. Everything already has power and all we have to do is plug in our four cell battery or up to six cell battery right here and everything will get power. So let's test it out. So to summarize how the heat testing went for the V2 model, uh, not great. Uh, as you can see here, things look really cool. I love how it looks in the canopy. I love being able to look around and if I wanted to clean off the canopy to make it a little bit better, I totally could. The issue is that there is still just not enough airflow within the canopy to really cool off the air unit. And by the end of this, the air unit did overheat, or at least I got a message in the goggles saying that the air unit is overheating. It's going to have to stop recording. And if it doesn't get cooled off soon, the whole air unit is going to shut off just to protect itself. Um, and I think that's for a couple of reasons, or it's too hot for a couple of reasons. One, there's only one hole in the canopy, and that's at the back, and that's for the antenna to stick out and the fan is blowing away from that hole. So it's not able to expel all that heat anywhere. So if I wanted to go fix things, I might drill more holes in the canopy to let more air in and out so that it's not just recirculating this hot air. But I do like how this fan is pointed straight across the heat sink fins. I think it is pushing more heat away. As you can see in a sec, we're gonna check the temperatures of the heat sink, the air unit itself, and it is still in the uh, low 100s, which is just too hot for any sustained flight. And you see, I got about three and a half minutes, which just isn't good enough, or at least not for what I want. See, yeah, we got in the 110s on the air unit. 
and that is just too hot. And so I did um, rerun this test without the canopy just because I was curious if it's just sitting by itself uh, without any of this recirculating hot air, if it's just sitting on the bench, will it do any better? And I did get a little better results there. You'll see it in just a second here. Um, when there isn't this recirculating and slowly heating up hot air, we do get a much longer recording. Uh, I think it was about at six minutes. It told me, hey, things are getting a little too hot. We're gonna have to stop recording, but it never shut off. So I think that's a little bit more of a win in that I will be able to see the whole time. It's just that I won't be able to record the whole time. So again, my goal is to put this whole system in a canopy as you can see here, this is the uh, outside of the canopy test. We're sitting at five minutes, still going strong. But my goal is to have it inside an enclosed canopy minus a couple of air vent holes, because I understand that there will be have there will have to be holes for air to get uh, expelled. But I want it to sit within a canopy, because I think that's a really cool idea and it's a fun challenge. So I think I might have to add either another fan or more ventilation or maybe some air intake uh, holes in the canopy. Uh, but we'll see. So far, V2 is still in progress. So I really didn't want the conclusion of this video to be, yet we failed again, or to put it like Thomas Edison would, we found two ways to not make a canopy friendly digital version. So I figured if it won't work within a canopy, let's find a plane that doesn't have a canopy and put it on the outside. So I took our Timber X here and note this was on a Thursday and this video comes out on Sunday. So I really didn't have that much time to really figure this out, but I figured there is a nice window I can cut into because there's a whole lot of foam. And so I cut our removable uh, plane sided uh, attachment into our plane. So a lot of foam picking as well as some hot gluing and aligning to make sure everything's looking good. And then I also had to fashion myself a Y lead that'll give power to both the air unit and the plane itself. And I only wanted to plug in one thing whenever I went to fly. So I had a nice, make a nice uh, Y leaded system here, pretty straightforward but nice uh, extra wires that I had. And then just fashioning it into this plane mounted side, uh, the XT60, XT30, and the uh, PWM signal, just like the RV7 that I was talking about at the beginning of the video, but I had to make it specific for the Timber X. And after a little bit more testing to make sure everything clips into place, I had to fish all of these wires in, because now there is a whole jungle gym of wires, but there being an additional digital system and then a little bit of hot glue to make sure everything stays in place. And if you're curious about this entire process, I will make a full length video going over all of this, transitioning this plane into a digital friendly system. But after about uh, two hours of R&D, we had a digital system on top of the Timber X, which looks really, really nice. And I was super excited to give it a try. So earlier today, I went out to the field and gave it a shot. And oh my goodness, is this so much fun to fly with. I'm used to flying with analog, which is really cheap and light. And finally getting into a digital system was just so crazy to see. And not only is it crystal clear everywhere, but seeing this recording afterwards, there's an onboard recording on the L3 air unit. It's even clear. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. It's so much fun. The uh, bag gimbal that I was using is super cool. There's so much degrees of freedom. It's a really cool project. Uh, and this is just clips from this flight. I did fly a couple more times and I'm going to be posting a full length video, both the entire build process, as well as a full breakdown of these videos like I normally do because it's super fun. But there will be for sure more digital flying in our future because it is so cool. It is so much fun. Uh, so I'm going to say that this V2 system is a win when you are not in a canopy. It is a loss when you are in a canopy because it just gets too hot. But uh, thank you so much for watching. This has been the v version two of our removable digital system. Uh, there will be more versions coming because I do want to get it inside a canopy. Thank you so much to our members. We can't do it without you guys. We really appreciate the continued support. But this was awesome. A super fun project and we can't wait to show you guys more of it. So thank you so much and see you guys next time.